<sighs> All of the things I dislike are dying. <laughs> Disney finds itself at the bottom of a billion dollar hole. Creative Assembly has to kill hyenas and is reeling from the tongue lashing delivered by their Sega overlords. And now, as the piece de resistance, the cherry on top of the cake, Warhammer Plus announces that it's losing millions. <laughs> God and Allah both are very fond of art, as it turns out, and even where one might balk, the other shall inevitably deliver. <laughs> so, to take a step back, what exactly are we talking about here? Well, GW has delivered their account for the years 2022 to 2023, as they are of course required to do, and within there, there are a couple of interesting little tidbits. Amongst the most interesting is that Warhammer Plus, or the Animations Department, as they are now referred to, uh, has an impairment loss of £2.9 million. Pounds. So, £3 million pounds in essence. Oh me, oh my. Now, what is an impairment cost? And what is it this in reference to the Animations Department? They're being a bit vague here, deliberately so, of course, because they've presented Warhammer Plus as a bit of the future, right? Streaming. It will bring us into the next year, the next millennia. No, it won't, because as it turns out, the streaming market is already severely overloaded, and, well, frankly, the product you are offering is severely substandard. But, oh well, details, right? Well, an impairment loss is when a company goes, okay, this thing is worth so much, but in reality, a year later, they look at it and go, shit, that's actually garbage. Um... We are going to have to mark an impairment loss of the value we thought it had compared to the value it actually has. And this then is in reference to animations again. Well, that is obviously Warhammer Plus, right? But how the hell could they have overestimated the values of Warhammer Plus by three million pounds? And it gets worse, as they also mention a 700,000 pounds impairment loss on alterations required to previously capitalized elements of software. Aha. Uh -huh. See, this is interesting because, okay, well, what kind of losses, impairment losses could you see here? Well, um, they could have, for example, they estimated their talent to be worth so and so much, it turns out there wasn't. They estimated their portfolio to be worth so and so much, and it wasn't. Or they estimated the value of their software to be so and so much, and it wasn't. Now, the latter one makes more sense because it's very easy to go like, okay, um, we have X amount of value in licenses, etc., uh, but actually we're not using all of it so it's not worth as much or we need different license software etc so we need to pay even more money and so on that makes a certain amount of sense but three million pounds in animation development losses oh no that's not quite so easy to explain in all due likelihood what this actually means is that the company is losing money in the animations department losing a lot more money than they had actually estimated to the point where the total value of their animations department as a whole is actually falling in other words they had so much so much money saved up now they've got a lot less that seems to be the most likely and realistic explanation particularly as we also have another little tidbit. You may note that they don't mention Warhammer Plus very often in this report, for a good reason, because they go on with the usual like, oh, Warhammer Plus is, is still very valuable to us, I, I, I promise it's not a piling flame of garbage or anything. Flaming pile of garbage or anything like that, totally not, oh no, no, certainly not. <laughs> uh, by the way, our sub subscription growth, so we had 100,000 in the first year, okay. Um, I doubt that, honestly, seeing the amount of free subscriptions you offered up, but for the sake of argument, let's assume 100,000 subscribers in the first year. All right, what have you done since? Um, 30,000? Hmm. So you're telling me that the rate of subscription growth has fallen uh, by 60 to 70 percent? Yes. <laughs> okay, okay then. I see we're hitting that ceiling already. And this is still, since they just mentioned subscriptions rather than, you know, paid subscriptions, that also means, again, the free subscriptions as well. So the real number is likely to be significantly lower. And the real loss is probably more correct then at three million pounds. Ouchies. That's a lot of ouchies, in fact. And 
Yet again, I think my timeline of about five or so years before the entire thing goes tits up appears to be reaffirmed. In fact, I'd be surprised at this point if it lasts five years, because, okay. Now this is a bit of backroom office rumours, so do bear that in mind. But I've got a couple of little birds within Games Workshop who occasionally whisper me some interesting th stuff. What I've heard is that one of plus the entire animations department is... Well, not going very well. You hardly need to be an insider to see that piece of information. But that there is also apparently quite a lot of internal drama in the compartment, with a lot of the lauded talent apparently already having quit. But due to the NDA, where they promised to not say or do anything that could damage Games Workshop for, what was it, five or three years after you're leaving the company? They're not actually allowed to say that they have moved on to anything. Because if they did that, it would damage the company. And apparently, a lot of the people quitting are doing so because of, well, a little bit of power harassment from the top. As quite a lot of the representatives have, um, inflated egos, shall we say. Again, backroom rumour and all that, but uh, seeing how GW operates lately and how much authority they have granted to their black library personnel who tend to be pretty far to the left, I wouldn't be surprised if a piece of cultural cancel, a piece of company cancel culture has worked its way into the department, as this is a creative branch, where the people who are already entrenched will look at the people coming in with, you know, actual talent and wrinkle their noses like, what do you mean you can actually do your job? That's not how we function here. <laughs> As we have seen in most gaming companies and entertainment companies, talent, well, it's quite shunned, if anything. We also have a, a, a drop in licensing revenue as well. Now, not a massive one, but it's interesting to see the decline, particularly considering that Games Workshop is supposedly in conversations with a lot of big customers and clientele. Now, we know that their gaming and licensing lineup is not exactly stellar right now. It's uh, Space Marine 2, that might be good. There's Rogue Trader, which is probably going to be good. In fact, I know for a fact that's going to be good but that's a very niche title and then you've got oh yeah, realms of ruin which i streamed on this channel and uh, uh no 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 <laughs> no very much so no <laughs> Uh, so their licensing costs, their, their licensing ink uh, profits, I mean, are probably going to start decreasing quite severely from this point on. And entertainment. Our contract negotiation with Amazon Studios continue. So within normal legal constraints, we have nothing more we can add and we will update you accordingly. Dead in the water. That, that's what that is. I have not heard a single peep come out of Amazon on anything about this. Nothing. Now, they've made some, some, uh, some goodwill overtures towards Games Workshop. We've talked about those on the Archcast here, where they've opened up accounts for them, for example, to go and strike uh, imitation stuff, which is anything using a 36mm base, pretty much, or anything that appears to be somewhat related to Games Workshop products off Amazon storefronts. They are doing that, so there is clearly some forward momentum, but nothing is firming up. No money allocations have been made by Amazon. It honestly sees, it seems as if Amazon, after losing a lot of money on Rings of Power and repeated losses on many other investments as well, the entertainment studio just has not been doing well at all, are very, very hesitant to pick up what is, to them, a relatively minor franchise like Warhammer, particularly looking at the results of Warhammer Plus. I am pretty damn sure that, uh, that Amazon is looking at that and going, Going, oh, I don't. Uh, we're already losing money hand over fist, and he wants us to take on another charity case. Um, you're gonna have to offer us some pretty serious considerations for this. And GW appears to be resistant. Uh, the rumors about Henry Cavill too, by the way, complete zip. I, in all due likelihood, it was. Uh, I'm sorry to say, but probably a bit of a PR stunt um, on behalf of Cavill 
who said like, okay, uh, we, we've heard rumors about this, like we've, we've been in, in very rough, uh, very preliminary talks, and then GW picked up on that and like reached out a hand to Amazon, like maybe, maybe, could you, could you give me some, uh, give us some money for this? And Amazon pretty much just swatted that away and said, nah, we're already billions in the hole, thank you very much. Uh, it, it's, it's looking unlikely that we will be seeing any kind of shows with Cavill, I'm afraid. Uh, um, still, there is, there is hope, but I wouldn't be holding my breath any time soon. Particularly also considering that the platform that this would be released on, Warhammer Plus, is dying, and that too could be one of the main points of contention. Uh, Games Workshop is sitting there thinking, we're bleeding millions out our arse here. Uh, we need to secure some big name stuff and we need it on our platform. Meanwhile, Amazon is sitting on the other end of the table going, yeah, you think you're losing millions? <laughs> Look at us. Do you have any idea how much we lost on the rings of power? No, no, no. This needs to be exclusive on our platform if we are even to consider this. And that might very well be where the impasse is as we now have two <laughs> contenders, both of which are draining their bank accounts at remarkable rates, <laughs> wondering who's going to pick up the bill. <laughs> Happy day. Happy day indeed. Oh well. It couldn't have happened to a better idea than one of a plus, right? Surely. Surely moving out there and aggressively slamming down on the best, most thriving fan animation market in fiction, in its total, and forcing all of its creators at gunpoint, in essence, to sign your ludicrous contacts or have a contract or have their, their Patreon, their social media, their YouTubes wiped off the face of the earth, and then forcing them into, into slave labor contracts with you, which they will quit as soon as they possibly can because of the power abuse of your actual employees, well, what could possibly go wrong? It sounds like such a, such a fantastic strategy. <laughs> oh, again, we're making a few leaps of judgment here, I, I will admit, but um, it does have a certain ring of truth to it, doesn't it? DW has never been the gentlest of company when it comes to how it treats those on the periphery of its attachment to it. Now has it? No. In fact, it has a long and proud history of treating everyone like complete and utter garbage, their customers included. And considering the quality of Warhammer Plus shows on delivery, well, it's just not that good. It just simply isn't that good. The animations are okay in some shows, in others it's kind of awful, and the frequent offerings, well, they're not frequent enough to be worth it. As for their non-animated stuff, it's simply just inferior versions of what you can already find on YouTube, delivered by far better, more enthusiastic and charismatic individuals. What on the plus? was never going to work the way they were doing it. Not on the scale, not on the budget, and not on the level of management that they've got running it. It could have worked out very well if they pitched their budget realistically, if they had a, had a decent expectation, if they had collaborated with the people who were already thoroughly entrenched within the 40k entertainment sphere on the internet. But in their endless hubris, they figured they could keep all the money, all the profits, all the limelight to themselves. And they were willing to shoot anyone who disagreed. Couldn't have happened to a better company, as I said. <laughs> Oh well, until next time, thank you all very much for watching, and I do hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.